Hey everyone, I wanna talk about why your worst case scenario is not the same thing as uncertainty directly, where the overlap between those kind of play into each other, some of those compulsive self-reassuring mantras you might be using, such as maybe, maybe not, thoughts or thoughts in the moment. There's some applicability there to kind of distance yourself with your intrusive thoughts, images, sensation, urges, but they're usually not enough to bring down the worst case scenario and more depth is usually needed. So before I go any further, please subscribe, hit that like button, comment down below, let me know what you think about this. I really do enjoy doing myth videos. Uh, it's something I do in, in my career as well outside of this. So it's just fun. Um, unfortunately, in the world of social media and the internet, there has to be a lot of information that kind of has to be deciphered through and, and put to the side because anyone can just start an account and talk about things and it kind of leaves people wondering, you know, is this the right thing to do? What does this mean? I heard someone talk about this. Is, is that what uncertainty actually means? And so I'm, I'm always willing to explain that to people in my coaching calls and the webinar services. And also, if you're interested in our coaching and webinar services, please email us at info at OCDrecovery.com. I had a whole, saw a hilarious comment on our Facebook group at OCD Recovery, fastest growing group on OCD and mental health. And we, <laughs> someone said, hey, have you watched that blonde guy's videos who talks really fast on sensory motor? They're really good. That just made me laugh really hard. Gemma sent me a picture of that. So, worst case scenarios. First of all, where do you learn how to break down worst case scenarios? Move my head, you can see the ring of my light in the background. So this book right here, which is the first book on the reading list, How to Stubbornly Refuse to Make Yourself Miserable About Anything, Yes, Anything, goes through multiple different chapters. And in the side of these chapters, there are exercises. And this book helps you break down. This is not a traditional self-help book. If I took 10,000 self-help books, they all, I can summarize all 10,000 of them in one page. You cannot do that with the, with these books. This is non-traditional self-help. It's a lot of emotive, a lot of behavioral changes, looking at yourself, breaking down beliefs. I'm reading another book right now that I've been meaning to read for a while. It's very similar to this, which is the seven uh, seven seven highly effect seven habits of highly effective people. Holy shit, tongue twister. And the, I think he definitely read Ellis because there is some really similar verbiage in there. Uh, maybe maybe he didn't, but I, I think he did. So you read this book and you learn how to break down your worst case scenario. Now, inside of your worst case scenario, there is a degree of uncertainty. And that means, you know, I'm going to put the work in. It's going to take me a while to get better, but there's no guarantee that I'm going to get better tomorrow or next week or something like that. But the problem with uncertainty only, now mind you, it's a key part of the recovery process it doesn't encompass a worst case scenario. It's more of a maybe, maybe not. Maybe this will happen, maybe this won't happen. But what happens if you never recover? What happens if you have relapses on and off for the rest of your life? What happens if there's something different about you? There, is that, oh, am I different, am I not different? And you stay in this cortisol suit for the rest of your life. Now it's important to highlight. That's very unlikely if you change your beliefs, move with time and patience, discipline, change your lifestyle factors, stop playing the victim, bring down your compulsions, the avoidance behaviors, all of them. You can't have a few. You gotta bring down all of them relating to your fears. You set yourself for a really good chance, but there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that I won't have the biggest sensory motor relapse in my life next week after a motor vehicle accident. We have no idea. But most people think that uncertainty is the same. Most people think that exposures or unconditional acceptance. Exposing yourself to a countertop with contamination OCD will not touch deep down the philosophical fear of what if I get contaminated, touch my mother and my mother passes away. That exposure can help show you how to wear uncertainty and kind of break down your beliefs partially, but it's very, very different from worst case scenario. So the first thing is reading these books right here. So um, I haven't done this in a while, but let's just do it right here. I'm kind of free flowing in this video. On page 96 and 97, as I talk about a lot, my two favorite numbers, as people like to say, let's say your activating event is harm OCD, right? And your belief is, I can't stand if my worst case scenario happened. It's the worst thing ever. It's awful. I'm a terrible person. I can't stand not knowing. I'm an idiot, a horrible, worthless person writing yourself off completely. And that produces chronic shame, guilt, anxiety, all these compulsive behaviors. Now, when you look at your worst case scenarios, your worst case scenario would look like this. Acceptance doesn't mean agreement. There's a good chance that I'm probably not going to lose control, right? There's a, there's a good chance, but there's no certainty that I won't lose control and do something that I would really not like. 
But even if that did happen, I would have lost control and hence had no control. Now this sounds very easy in theory, but the reason why many people brush off REBT and stoicism is because they take it for face value and they, they think, oh, this is really simple. This is not simple. This is very difficult. And in order to, to take your life back from OCD, changing your beliefs is the best way to do it, taking an active control. So where are some places where I move with uncertainty? So let's say you got fear, let's say harm OCD, or any type of moral. So harm OCD, P OCD, cheating OCD, religious OCD, going against your morals, fear of being a bad person, fear of going to hell. You'll have a plethora of different intrusive thoughts, images, sensation, urges. So moving with the uncertainty that they're gonna pop up in different times throughout the day is one of the best things you can do. Is it gonna happen at the gym? Is it gonna happen on a dinner date? Is it gonna happen when I'm with my children? Is it gonna happen when I'm going to get the mail? That type of uncertainty you can move with. But if you're moving with only uncertainty, you're not actually going to see the results that you're looking for. The results that you're looking for are actually gonna come from breaking down the worst case scenario, which you learn in the book. So for me, what was my worst case scenario and why was that different from uncertainty? So sensory motor OCD, mainly bodily sensation. So blinking, breathing, swallowing, saliva, and heartbeat. I call them the big five. But then you can have hyper-awareness of your thoughts, hyper-awareness of the bridge of your nose or your feet or the uh, temperature sensations. But primarily I'm talking about the bodily sensations. That includes bladder and visceral function, organs, anything like that. So I could move with uncertainty, which I did for a long time, but that actually never touched the belief, which was if I'm stuck with sensory motor and these sensations for the rest of my life, my life is horrible. So I had to take that, restructure and repackage that and bring that to a place where I thought, hey, this isn't the end of the world. I don't like being stuck with sensory motor OCD, but there's many other things in my life I have, I have, I can be grateful for, you know? Um, I have a wonderful life. I have a great life. I have my legs, I have my vision. I can walk, I can hike, I can go to the gym. I can have intimacy, I can eat great food. I can travel around the world. I can read and write. Uh, I can listen to videos. I can do a lot of things that many people can't do. I have access to clean water. And a lot of people hear that and they think how superficial, oh, you're undermining my suffering, which is totally understandable that you think that. But the reason why we talk about the perspective of looking at how fortunate your life is, is that is a piece inside the toolbox for changing your own fear. So worst case scenario and uncertainty are not the same. They're quite different. And it is very important to realize that if you want to recover from something that's been sticky for a really long time, you're going to have to break that down with some level of worst case scenario. So, you know, or the books on the reading list, go through them and realize that uncertainty has great parts for OCD recovery, but it's just not the entire story. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I just want to jump on here and talk about some of the misconceptions behind worst case scenario and uncertainty. If you have any other further questions, I did this for a person on the YouTube channel, you'll know who this is. I've been going through and taking requests and doing those videos. Thank you so much for watching. And again, if you're interested in our coaching or webinar services, please email us at info at OCD Recovery and we'll get back to you in timely fashion. Have a good one, everyone.